All right, so my question is, what do you think immediately, what's your first thoughts when someone says administration? What's your first thoughts? Wow. Your first thought? Paperwork. Paperwork, your first thought is paperwork. Leon? Run. <laughs> Forest. Jimmy? Paperwork. Administration equals paperwork. Money. Administration is money. I thought you would have said spreadsheets. <laughs> Miss Finn? Money as well. All right. Agnes, Andrew? Human resources. Okay, pretty good. Cezanne? Secretary. Admin equals secretary. Management. Good. Uh, hey? Order. I thought you said boring. I was going to shoot you. <laughs> Order. All right. So, um, as, a, as an assistant to the GOD, the Group Operations Director, administration plays a, a functional role. And so you're all right. Administration has got HR issues. HR issues like contracts, uh, like, I don't know if you do medical aid or some sort of provident fund, uh, leave policies if you have staff. Uh, there's the financial management, uh, which is the daily cash flow, the bank accounts. Uh, there's the operational management of a church, uh, things like uh, your constitution or how you represent yourself to a bank. Uh, how do you handle all of those things? And often I've been asked the question, Kim and I have been asked the question, how, do you, how does eldership, uh, ministry, and admin, how do they fit together? Or how does it work? And uh, the, the truth of the matter is it's not actually m for me. It's not about my opinion. It's not about how it affects me. It really is how admin fits into the broader team. Uh, an A-type personality, and I know you know somebody like this, will, and, and, and essentially guys who are planting churches are very often pioneers. They're pioneers because they just want to cut to the chase. They just want to get the bottom line and everything will just fall in. And that's how they break open the territory, right? And so when you say the word admin and they think paperwork, uh, they start to be like, just give me the big picture. Admin's not my thing. Just give me the big picture. And uh, they, they push it aside. Um, they, they, they're quite scared that what you're going to land up doing if you want to bring in some admin to the systems that you're going to make it very organizational. We're going to take minutes at every elders meeting. We're going to take note on who left the windows open or the aircon on on Monday night. Oh, yeah, that was me. And so they're going to make notes of those things and they're going to make sure that everybody knows it. The corporate world is full of it. If you look at the CC list, everybody who's anybody gets told about everything. Why? Just in case, you know. But being part of an eldership team, for us, for Kim and I, we know that we're part of a team. You would have seen this week, and you've heard it often, Marcus and Adele, they lead this eldership team. We are on their team. So they are the lead elders of this church. And every team needs to work together to accomplish the purpose to that which this church, your church, has been given to you by God. Now, yes, we all have the big picture, and we all have similar callings, but maybe you've got a specific calling. We're, we're a team. Marcus leads that team. And uh, every person on that team has a role to play. It would be pretty weird if that eldership team was only made up of evangelists. And then no pastoring happens and no teaching happens. And as we've heard this week, um, the thing that's stuck in my, my heart is that most of the speakers... They won't even know this. But as you've sat here under this ministry this week, God has drawn a thread through your heart to be like, this is important. And there's maybe four or five things that have literally been said over and over again. Being on a team is very much driven by the heart of what it means to be on a team, right? And so you've, you, you know the DNA example. Um, a slave is not a son in the house. We know the whole adoptive model, but I'm just saying like that DNA, a son is always a son. And we speak about that concept of being a son in the house. If your heart's not in the right place, then my administration is just, I don't know, an eight to four kind of role. It's just, this is my box. And you heard one or two of the guys mention, this is my box. This is all I am. Don't expect me to do this. All I'm needed to do is administration, my little spreadsheets. They make me happy. 
there are different types of teams. And uh, this week, I think Grant, he mentioned uh, this idea. Um, and so on the team, there are, there are, if, if we're all made up of one particular gift, then everybody's going to want to be the striker. <laughs> um, and that's just not helpful. We, we need to work well as a team. Um, Grant used the idea of the gridiron example versus the basketball example. Two very, very different uh, sporting examples, but the basketball team is very, very few people on the court. It's about five people on the court at the time. They're quite general. Everybody does everything. They're all running around doing the same thing. But the whole gridiron view, there's like, I don't know, what is it? There's 11 people on the field and 46 people on match day, or up to 46 people. And so it's very obvious to me that there's some specialists in there. And there was a joke about the guy, they pad him up and they kit him up with a helmet and all he does is get on and he kicks the ball, that's his job. And he's like, cool, done my job or I missed or I slipped <laughs> and the kick, kicking opportunity is over and he goes and sits down on his bench and waits for the next opportunity. So there are those different teams and as has been said a whole, a whole lot this week, your focus is to be like, okay God, you've called me, you've called me to lead a team and so I'm going to lead that team as best I can. Now what you're looking for is you're recognizing leaders. Okay, you're looking ways to raise them and release them in their gifting. You've heard that a couple of times this week. And that goes with administration. Like who has got this kind of a skill? When we first joined eldership back in 2011, um, we were working with a lady who also joined the same time as us. And she was st st stressing. It was, there was a lot of work. And Kim and I were sitting, how do we divide the work? And, but it's all connected. And eventually we figured out it's not a straight line where Kim does this and she does that. It was like a puzzle piece. They're all connected, and then you do this piece of Ekurileni's billing, and I'll do this piece of the municipal accounts. And so there's that cookie cut of what the team looks like when it gets to work well together. As administrators, we're all very excited when the Bible mentions the word admin. We're like, you see, we do have a place in this world. We do have a right to live. Yes, it is mentioned last, but we're gonna, it's there. And so I'm going to read you some of those scriptures in 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, administration is listed as a spiritual, uh, a charismatic gift. And the original Greek word, which I'm not going to try to pronounce, actually refers to like a captaining role. It's a governing role. It's, it's a role that leads. It's a role that steers. Literally means to steer. It's like a nautical term where this pilot gets onto the ship and helps navigate the ship through into the harbor. It's, it's that kind of leadership. Now, that's maybe you've heard that a hundred times. Uh, but the idea of that is not just a deacon role. And I say deacon role because for me, having come from a management position uh, where I was working in the corporate world, I would do anything that Marcus asked me to. He asked me, would you handle the admin in the church? And I asked him, what do you mean? I got it, yeah, just the admin. <laughs> um, and then we landed on team and he joined me to the eldership team. For me, not that it was a bad thing, but to see eye to eye to the other elders, it meant so much that we could play on the same playing field. This wasn't a them talking down to me, you move that box there because I said so. That was a we're governing this thing together. This chap is governing with you. We're working it out together. You give me what you need and I'll help get it done. That was very helpful to me. And so in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I don't want you to be uninformed. So it talks a lot about the fact that there are spiritual gifts and we don't want to be uninformed about it. And as preachers, I'm sure that you've opened up uh, that scripture to many. Further down in verse 4, it says, now there are varieties of gift, but the same spirit. Isn't that a good thing? There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Isn't that a lifesaver? It's the same God that empowers us, empowers me to have the grace for what I can do and the grace for what Ryan can do and anybody else. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. That speaks of team. It speaks of team. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, 28, this is where all the admins, administrators get excited. It says, now you are the body of Christ, individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Now, that's, a, that's freeing because administration is part of that team that gets the job done. Now, we will lean to one way or another. 
okay? And administrators have got a bad rap because administrators often like the detail side of life, and they're often quite, if uh, earlier this week uh, one of the guys mentioned like a personality type, they're often quite, because they're detailed, they can be quite narrow-minded and quite focused. And sometimes it is difficult for me to see the sun above the clouds because actually I'm the one moving the boxes around underneath the clouds, and everyone's just casting vision. It's wonderful up top because it's blue sky and anything's possible. While it's true that I will devote myself to much of the admin, it is untrue to think that I can leave myself there. The whole um, focus of the church is what, as Ryan was saying, is what Jesus has called us to. So I am just as much needing to be sensitive to the prophetic, to the apostolic, to the translocal, to the evangelism. I may not be an evangelist, but that doesn't mean I can't love my community. Right? Simple. So, is administration contrary to organic life? Well, the Bible shows us that while God is organized, He does not administrate an organization. Okay? It's not, he doesn't run in chaos. God is quite organized with what He does, but He is not administrating an organization. It's organic. We don't want to get confused between organization and administration. When we think organization, for those of you who have corporate experience, you think of the organogram, the chart that says, this is where the bishop sits. <laughs> He's in charge. Everybody reports to him, and you carry his Bible when he walks through the door. Well, what we have decided this week as church plants, we're all on the same team. We have different functions, different roles, and we're going to get this thing nicely done together. And so we don't want to just settle for confusion or chaos. It's not fun. It's not fun. I was going to bring this out a little bit later, but Keir Taylor, he mentioned this a long time ago, and it just struck me, that fivefold ministry breaking into new territory. If we climb into a four by four and we head out together and we land in this new territory, all with different giftings, I know the conversation there might be quite tricky, but when we get there, if the evangelist who is sort of stereotypical, the guy on the front foot, if he disregards the gifting of the teacher or the, 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 the pastor, can you imagine how that thing works? So the evangelist may disrespect the, the fact that the stage or the setup or the admin team didn't put it together. It's like, you guys are not serious about this thing because I'm the man of power for the hour and I'm like, what am I supposed to stand on? How are supposed people see me or hear me? But if the heart of the guy who's organizing that thing is the same as like that guy, he just wants the limelight, and there's no uh, synergy there. But if we're all on the same page and we all have the same thing, then we're not fighting for the limelight. We're all getting the job done as God would call us to. When we work well together and we're not fighting administration, we want to know that we're together when the meeting starts. In our country, we joke a lot about African time. We joke a lot about it. But it's not fun if you say, look, we're going to get together at 9 o'clock, and then people are arriving at 10 o'clock. Well, well, when does the meeting start? How are we going to actually move forward with this thing? Look, if you organize a bri and you arrive an hour later, well, then you can cook your meat and the fire's cold. That's your problem. <laughs> but when we want to get something done, we want to do it well together. We want to make sure communication is clear. And the way we do it is we start together. We work it well together. Now, again, if you start holding your gifting too tightly, that's when problems start. So if you can imagine, this is easy for me. I'm an administrator. But if I hold my gift too tightly, am I fun to be with? No. But if the evangelist holds his gift too tightly, well, then he's right. No, it's the same. We can't hold our gifts too tightly. We've got to work well together. I'm happy Marcus leads this team. You know, if we start doing something, but we don't bother to communicate, and we're not actually talking this thing through together. Communication, you've heard a couple of times this week from a number of folk. Without communication, we're not getting things done. It's, it's just going to leave a mess. If there's no paper trail when it comes to finance systems, well, at some point when Mr. CRL walks through the door and he's like, well, show me your contracts. Uh, oops, <laughs> what's a contract? <laughs> show me your constitution. We want to have those things in place. I'm going to quickly run through some benefits and some tips for the leader, and then Kim's going to work through some systems, and then we'll take some, some questions. Um, so benefits of good administration. 
Good administration gets the vision done. I might not have said it, but admin does not lead a church. Right? The evangelist, if he's not the lead elder, does not lead the church. The pastor, he does not lead the church. Good administration does not lead the church. It helps get the vision done. They're all part of this team. Good administration brings clarity. One of the things I've really enjoyed about working with Marcus is when uh, I hear a whisper and we communicate and everyone's like, okay, okay, cool, that's what we're going to do. The same with let's put church planters together. It's a great idea and it's, it's, it's very noble for us to open up our venue and arrange the catering and all this sort of stuff, but, but if we don't communicate, no one's going to know it's there. And it was so disappointing for me this week to hear from some poor guy in KZN, he didn't get the message. I'm like, oh man, how do we communicate? How do we get the message out there? You're like, how do we, good communication. That's what's great. That's what makes me happy. <laughs> it helps everyone understand what's expected of them. Good administration helps everybody plan. So you have a vision, and I don't want to over-administrate this, but we're going to break open into a new territory. The visionary guy has got some kind of a download, some kind of a, a, a word from God to say, we're going to do this. This is the, the, the area we're going to go into. And when we work well together, then there's nothing vague about who does what. There's a commitment to communicating, like I went to that guy and this is what happened. Sharing amongst the team. So that when you break into something else, there's another sharing that goes, and like, hang on a bit, that ties in with what I was doing yesterday. That's an open door for me. Let me go and it's like who's if you've worked in an open plan office, it's chaos because the person sitting next to you is talking about their problem and the person sitting next to them is talking about something else. But every now and then, that open plan office is so helpful because you're like, wait, they're struggling with a problem and I'm struggling with the same problem. Let's put our heads together and then the problem gets solved. That's just open-handed, open-handed stuff. Good administration frees you up for the apostolic. If your calendar is one big fat mess, well then you've double booked, you've disrespected the person. You said, yeah, we'll hook up on Tuesday, but you've really connected with, uh, or you've said that you'll connect with somebody else. It's just, it's disrespectful. It's not going to work. So here's some tips for the lead guy from the admin team. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's really helpful if the, if the lead guy doesn't get bogged down with too many details. Even if you're an administrator and you lead, it is helpful that the lead guy doesn't get bogged down with too many details. Allowing them to have the time to think through things. You know, a lead guy that, that can manage well, can delegate well, we're going to get the work done. If his team communicates what they've been doing to him, then he's got the sense, or she's got the, 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 the team, the, the husband and wife team, they've got the sense that they that they doing that which they're called to. We're making headway. But if you give a, an instruction, let's go and um, pray for this, this, this family, but there's no feedback, no testimony, well, then it's, you're just in the dark. And no one has a clue as to whether it was successful, whether there was breakthrough, whether there's a testimony that's worth sharing, encouraging the church. It's just... Administration is loaded with detail. This week, if, if I think about everything before we got onto stage, there's so much that you guys have to think about. But if you need to get someone to help you with, the, with admin, try to find the right person. It's not always easy. And again, it might not be a nice cookie cut to be like, click, click, this is the person. I've seen it before. You, uh, even within the media team, we've got a group of people doing this and a group of people, people doing something else because that's their skill set. Um, it would be great if we could just take Jono and put him through a, a little graphic design machine and then we bring out all these senior graphic designers and we've got a whole lot of stuff, yeah. Uh, admin is not there to intimidate you. It's not cool. Um, it, it's just there to support you. Admin cannot intimidate you. We need to keep it relational and we always got to keep the big picture in mind. The administrators work with the team. Now, having said all that visionary stuff, um, we're going to talk through a little bit of systems. Kim's going to take us through for the next 10 minutes or so on systems, and then we'll take some of your questions. Good morning, everyone. So I love spreadsheets, and I know what you're thinking. It just must be God then, and <laughs> I do agree with you. Uh, it is anointing. I love it. 
you can't get me away. And the longer the formulas, oh, it's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, macros. All right, my favorite verse on administration is in Proverbs. Proverbs 24. One day I walked by the field of an old lazy bones. This is from the message. And then past the vineyard of a lout. They were overgrown with weeds, thick with thistles, all the fences broken down. I took a long look and pondered what I saw. The fields preached me a sermon and I listened. A nap here, a nap there. A day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. Do you know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life with poverty as your permanent house guest. And so, yeah, one day I was just wondering all this stuff I do up in the office over there. If I didn't do it, you know, would anyone know? <laughs> And I was just uh, encouraged with this verse. If you leave it, it's going to grow. I know administration um, is not the big topic in this context, seeing as we got the last session on the last day. <laughs> we definitely have more days of it. <laughs> and I did I have to grow into the fact that um, not everyone thinks like me. Uh, so that was a big lesson. But if we leave it, um, people say, lean into your strengths, but if you don't like cooking, that's just not one of the things you can really leave, because you will go hungry. So admin, unfortunately, is not a choice. You have to find a way around it. Whether you do it to yourself, whether you pay somebody, it's not optional. Um, otherwise, it's going to grow into thistles, that thing grows into a monster, gets teeth, it just gets worse. So with like activation energy, something that um, Ryan said was, when you start to communicate, communicate to the way you like to communicate. Why? Because it's easy. It's, it's easier than the next way to communicate. Um, so with anything you do, there's a little bit of an activation energy. But if you leave it, and then it, tomorrow it's double, then you need double, actually a little bit more than double the activation energy. And then it grows a bit more. So if it's your weakness, I encourage you just to keep it small. Because then it doesn't look... It doesn't grow into an ug ugly monster. Okay. Um, so we're talking about systems, but we live in a technologically wonderful age, and there are many systems and many beautiful ways of doing things, apps, websites, the whole thing. My advice is that the best system to use is the system that is used. <laughs> so if it's pen and paper, if it's spreadsheets, or it's a mixture of pen and paper and spreadsheets and apps. Um, so for me, I'm supposed to be all digital. I do love digital things, but the grocery list, the grocery list is still pen and paper. Okay? So whoever you're working with, however you're working, the best system is the one that is used. Okay? But the bottom line is you must at least have a system. I know creativity doesn't fire well. There, there used to be a show called Mr. Maker. And his filing system was huge drawers, like the whole wall full. And that's how you, that's how you file creativity. Um, but there must just be a system. Even if you walk into someone's place and you know it looks like a mess, there might even be a system in there. And so there has to be some system. Otherwise, you've got to remember it all in your head. And I don't know, I can only remember three things. Two, maybe three things at a time. And if you don't write it down and you don't have a system that captures it, you're going to miss something and it's going to bother you. Cool. So, finance. I heard over here, finance is administration. It truly is. But there's two halves to finance. The one side is spending and the other side is recording what was spent. Okay, and they've got two very different personalities. The spending is like... A lover, an Italian lover. Over there you've got sleepless nights and elation when the money is there and depression when it isn't there. And um, should it be this or should it be that? Or no, this is what I want. No, this is what I want. Priorities, a whole fight over priorities. It's definitely not a science. It is an art. But accounting is like the high school mistress, the classic... You know, Charles Dickens, long nose. Um, she's got her eye on you, and that is very scientific. There's no way around it. It must all add up, okay? 
And so you just, if you understand that difference, when somebody, somebody asked me what I do, I said, I uh, do the finance in the church. Oh, so you could see that glint in there. Ah, oh, so if I want something, I'm just coming to you. And I'm like, uh, n- no, that's not how it works. I do the recording of the finance. <laughs> or if I say, oh, I'm doing salaries, I'm like, oh, you're doing salaries. I mean the paperwork for the salaries. <laughs> okay, so just understanding the difference between the two. The one requires a lot of... Um, don't forget the second one. The, I know the, the, the other one is very critical. It's very wrapped up in direction. Whether you budget or you don't budget or you divide the budget, it's a very heated um, directional discussion that I'm not going to get into here. <laughs> but the accounting is going to run away with you if you're going to leave it. So please, yeah, get help if you need help. There are many nice systems on the internet. All right, so then the next thing is tax. Somebody said tax, tax, admin is tax. And I was also surprised to find that out. <laughs> um, wherever you are, uh, they, this week they've said lead elding is, eldering is lonely. Well, don't be lonely because the tax man is very interested in you. And so he, <laughs> wherever you are, what country you're in, if you're not paying tax, if tax is an issue for a church, just at least make sure of that, okay? And make sure of it annually. Um, there, yeah, so there is a tax man, and you need to find out your place in this world. In terms of South Africa, and I know some of, quite a few of you are going to plant in South Africa. Let me just say, with the United States, I think their laws are you have to have a receipt for every donation, so I'm not planting in USA. <laughs> that seems like a lot of hard work. But I did read this book, okay? It's just called A Practical Legal Guide to Starting Up NGO Matters, okay? And it looks, it looks pretty intimidating. I didn't really want to read it either. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do this. In Afrikaans, they say, Met geweld kan je jou finger in jou neus afbreek, which means... With determination, you can break off your finger in your own nose, okay? And that was what I was going to do to get through this book. But good news is about that part of it, which is 70%, is literally just the law typed out. <clears throat> and you can skip it. It's wonderful. You just get to the end there, and it's, it's beautiful. The next half is about four ways you can register your church. But two of them don't, this is NGO, two of them don't actually count for churches. So that's even half of that. It's, it's actually very nice and nice time reading. And if you pay me money, I've got two pages photocopied of the important stuff. So I'm trying to reduce your activi- activation energy on this, okay? Two things I want to say. <laughs> so we, are, we recommend when churches come to us that you register as a not-for-profit company. You do that on the CRPC website, and people know how to deal with not-for-profit companies. People like banks, they don't ask you to sign your own life away um, when you got that certificate. Um, And we just want to point out, which is on those two pages, you do not have to be registered with the Department of Social Development, and some government officials don't really know that. So just don't do it. It's a lot of paperwork, unless you want grants for some... Um, activities that you do that are tax-free, don't do that. Okay, so last thing on tax is as a church, um, South Africa generally loves you because you help a lot with the people. And you can apply for tax exemption on your income tax, not as your pay as you earn. I'm sorry about that, I did look into it. But not uh, pay as you earn, only... um, Income tax, but just make sure you are registered. Otherwise, your income is taxable. Get that sorted out. I've thought about these things in queues at SARS, and this is why it's very fresh in my mind. Not fresh, but like firmly implanted. Just do those things before they grow into monsters. All right. Good. Those are the two big sections I just wanted to cover, was the finance and the tax. Other than that... um, Rosters, okay? A good system is the system that's used. And if you want, whoever's heading up the main section of your rosters, which is usually the worship team, um, make sure they're comfortable with it. And we've got 
We can tell you what it is. It's an Alvanto from Australia, but there are quite a few systems. You just got to find the one that's that you're comfortable with, that you can pay for, that uh, is accessible not only to you but to other people. Because that's the best. What's the first thing you do when you shepherd people? Well, my thing is, well, make a list of the people, and so then have a system for that. Okay, and use it. Uh, so with the rosters, just with the tea and coffee, I just want to make a point of this. We've been around the bush. You, there's always a question of do you have specialized teams to make tea and coffee and set up and all of that? Or do you have life groups and everyone in the church rotates through that? We, as a big church, we've learned it's a good thing to get the whole church to do those kind of things. Because those are the things like washing dishes. Those are the things that are always referred to in sermons like make a cup of tea, wash the dishes. And it's a point of discipling in terms of you're part of this church. Why aren't you here on time? What's the problem? Why couldn't you come early for that one day? It's a real good point of discipling. Then the calendar. Calendar needs to be accessible by a lot of people. Making a paper calendar is... Uh, it's the fastest thing to go out of date, even faster than media. Um, so just keep it common. We use Google calendars. If you're going to use spreadsheets that need to be shared or documents that need to be shared, use Google Sheets. Just find emailing Word documents, even across Dropbox. It just gets hairy. Um, and then there's other wonderful communica so communicating in different cities. In different countries, you'll communicate differently. Yeah, WhatsApp is everything a lot of the time. Um, but I was surprised to find out, not everywhere. I think in America, it's Slack. And definitely WhatsApp is not featuring in China. So you need to find out how people communicate best. And that's what communication is about. Unfortunately, as the communicator, you just need to find... Everyone has their slight ways of communicating and you need to find out what that is to be effective and just use those different channels. I know to start small and then spread, but you've got to realize if you want that person to do something, don't message them in the middle of the night. But the next person, if you message them in the middle of the night, the first thing they wake up, they'll see it, they're on it. So you know what I mean. It's just working with that other person and how they communicate. Other task, manage these task management systems, we use Trello. Um, I use email as my to-do list. I even email myself. And uh, that works for me, but it's just because I use it. So that's the bottom line, use the system. But there are many lovely task sharing uh, systems that are free at the baseline. And you know, unless you're using it for sharing whiteboards and things like that, you can get by with having it for free. Events and catering, when I started here, I just really wanted to design a ticket system and things like that. At the moment, there's a few things you can do. You can even do free events on Quicket. Um, so just go and search the wonderful world of internet. Ask around if you want to. But there's lovely tools that can help you with do the thing you want to achieve. And um, then back to staff and human resources. Just the note with the contracts. I thought it was a bit, you know, it's not very churchy to sign contracts. But firstly, it is a government requirement. It is a lawful requirement. And it does, it is helpful because people are put on, you know, you're put on the same page as to what you expect and what I expect. And while you're still friends, you sign this thing. And if there comes a tough time, which hopefully you don't get to, at least you can refer to that and just get to some sort of baseline, work with that, and then move forward from there. So contract is very overhead as it seems they are they do have their place they are helpful and and at the same time you are keeping the law which is nice okay um i just also want to make a mention about passwords um please have some system for your passwords and uh use like really long passwords you don't even have to really make them up you can have systems that generate it for you, and you can use them and make them like long, like 17 characters. Because um, cybersecurity is a thing, and it's only going to get tougher. And your password, one, two, three password, is the reason why people can still hack in this world today. So 
please don't use the same password across the board. Even if you use, and don't use the same password, because if they manage to get that arbitrary house design website that you put your password in, if they manage to hack that and get your email and your password, they use it to test other things. So it's got nothing, the thing they're hacking has got nothing to do with that, but they use that and test other things. So just get into a good habit with passwords. Long ones are very, very difficult to break. Short ones, quite easy. And ones with words, really, really easy to break. And that's what the Poppy Act is actually the first step to cyber security. So I, I'm also annoyed by Poppy because I'm on this side of the line. But we do need to respect it and we do need to see what it's in for because its end thing is cyber security. So let's, let's do that. Let's, especially in the UK, uh, I mean the United States, identity theft is big. So just from the start, get a, work it out, get a package, a thing that does passwords and uh, yeah, be a good password person. Right, so administration, I just want to say this, last thing. Silence is golden. Unless you have kids, then silence is trouble. So it's the same with admin, okay? <laughs> just because it's quiet, don't leave it like SARS, even the tax man, if he's quiet, doesn't mean everything is well. Please check in on those systems. Please check in on your own admin people and your own finance things and do those yearly whatevers you need to do. Because if you just leave it, it might be going down a hill, you know, not up your visionary hill. All right. God bless you guys. We love you. We love to I love this talk on, as I said, spreadsheets. Mm, I love them. And yeah, if you need help, we're there. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. So we have run till to the end of our session, 12.30. Um, if there's any like real burning question, I think maybe we can take one or two. Hold a second, we'll get you the mic. Peter's got a question. So financial impropriety happens in churches and uh, just wanted to ask in terms of fiduciary duties, what measures do you put in place to prevent fraud or suspicions thereof? That's perhaps more important. And what are the pitfalls to avoid uh, especially in the early days of a church plant. Yes. Alrighty, then very quickly, um, SARS changed the law, and we have to have at least three fiduciary directors on your constitution. So in the old way of doing things, all elders were um, listed on the constitution as fiduciary. So you choose at least three unrelated. And then when it comes to processing payments, those three unrelated, generally, guy, uh, generally unrelated guys, um, they need to then approve of a payment. Um, if you can, segregation of duties is super important. So the guy who gets the quote is not the same guy who processes the, the payment. Um, there's, there's some kind of connection. In the Cornerstone Church and many other churches, there's at least two approvers. So when we make a payment on the bank, I can approve the one side. Um, Kim normally she creates the payment, I check it, Kim attaches the invoice and the request to pay, and then Barry or Greg or David, they will then check that same attachment. So there's a little bit of a team dynamic to what are you paying and why are you paying this? Oh, it's for jumping castles. What? That's the price of jumping castles. And then there's a little bit of a conversation to understand why we're doing what we're doing. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just with Peter's question about financial... Uh, accountability, yeah. Um, I think it's like with any accountability. You can have accountability teams upon accountability teams, and then some people somehow uh, sidestep that as well. And so checking in all? on your systems you and not just all? leaving it because just you don't all. like admin, that really is one part. And um, uh, yeah, just looking into what is being paid, how it's being paid, it does need a check. Um, from external people, not the usual people that do the thing, even though it goes silent. Um, that is just really the best way that I've seen you can avoid that kind of thing, including the two people check every payment, which can be quite laborious, and I don't think every company does that or every church does that, but it does, does raise questions, does keep things, uh, keeps people in touch with things.
Yeah, with that, every one of our creditors, because sometimes you have like a preferred supplier, their details are captured on your system, and when we call it up and we say, okay, we're paying, I don't know, uh, Glenn.com or whatever, and because he supplies the cups, um, but that those banking details are confirmed by an external party to make sure that those banking details actually belong to Glenn.com and not to Kim.com. Um, so, you know, that when you call that supplier up, that, that is actually matching. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Ryan. All right. I'm supposed to close this off with prayer. Is that okay? okay. Father, we just want to thank you for this incredible time, the potential to influence the world. Lord, you have placed the future of the world in the hands of the church. We are the hope of the world. There is no other plan given by heaven for this world. So thank you that we can partner with you, Holy Spirit, into the future of this planet. Thank you, Lord, that you have entrusted your kingdom, the power of your kingdom, the authority of your kingdom to people like us. And so, Father, I pray over every church planter, over every church leader that is going to take up the baton and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Thank you that your word has said that the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. I pray that there'd be an urgency. I pray that there would be a violence and an authority over every single person represented here today. That as we take your kingdom forward, there'd be great success. That the kingdom of darkness would crumble as we penetrate the darkness with the light. I thank you, Father, for the hope, the destiny, the direction that is going to be released through every single one of these people represented here and their families pray your protection and your guidance over those families as well in Jesus name be glorified Lord let your kingdom come let your will be done in the churches of the future in Jesus name amen